Hello, hello, my little humble bees. Welcome in to our first ever Storytime Saturday. I'm LJ Bray. My pronouns are they, them. I am, of course, the most humble streamer on Twitch. So today we are looking at Capus Notes Forget Me Not. It's a visual novel, and I've been wanting to do... I mean, I've been wanting to add an extra day to my streaming schedule for a while now. I've been enjoying streaming so much, talking to all of you out there. Um, and I, I've been wanting to do more reading in my streams because I enjoy doing the silly voices. Um, so I figured we'd add a day, uh, a stream day, a Saturday. We can make this for visual novels and uh, the like. Anything that requires a lot of reading, basically. Because it gives me a chance to do uh, more and more voices. Now, I don't know much about this game, uh, other than it's a visual novel, it doesn't have voice acting, and um, other than that, it seems like it's a, a pretty good. I, I honestly don't know much more. Um, so yeah, let's get into this. Uh, let's get started. Right now. This is it, my goal. Started with a performance from the orchestra, followed by greetings from the president and a speech. The ceremony that welcomed me, Yuta Kiriha, Kiriha? Yuta Kiriha, that welcomed me, Yuta Kiriha, as a new student of the University of Tsukuba, Tsukuba? Tsukuba. University of Tsukuba was progressing smoothly. Whatever speech from the podium was converted to letters in gothic font and printed on a large screen above the stage. It was almost as if they were trying to prove how much preparation had been made by showing how many words filled up the, the large space. Uma. I guess that's for the students that are deaf. Huh? You know, the screen. Uma grinned at me as if to say, you were looking at that too, weren't you? We were both looking at the same thing, but he had a different perspective. Hey, TG! Thank you for the raid! Hi, everyone! Hi, my, my name is LJ Bray, if you don't know me. My pronouns are they, them. And today we're doing a, a visual novel called Campus Notes Forget Me Not. I know nothing about it. Hi, Bruxis. Good to see you. Hi, TG. Um, we've just started. Uh, apparently, um, we're, it's, it takes place at some university. We're a university student. We're sitting through the opening ceremonies, and we met this guy uh, a few minutes ago. And that's about it. So there's not much to catch up on. Hi, Devil Bird. Hi, MP, uh, uh, MPRCD and MBH Junior. Couch Sentinel, hello, hello. Hi, everyone. I'm not sure if it's our first day. Oh, no, apparently down here it says we're uh, third year transfer students. We're transfer students? Oh, transfer students in a anime-based, like, visual uh, style. It's always exciting. <laughs> Yes, it's good to see you again too, NPR. Okay, uh, we were both looking at the same thing, but he had a different perspective. I had met him just minutes ago and found out he was majoring in information sciences like I was. We were both third year's transfer students. <laughs> yes, good to see you too, um, Devil Bad. I was looking for a seat when he waved me over to an empty seat next to him. If he hadn't done so, I would have never been able to push through the crowd and six sit smack in the middle of the row. I sat down and we began to chat. It was rare that I felt comfortable enough to hold a conversation with a stranger, but I felt if, his, if I had known him for a long time. Hmm, foreshadowing maybe? That's pretty impressive. They don't have the uh, courage of... Hang on, let me begin that sentence again. That's pretty impressive. They don't have a college of disability sciences here for nothing. Puma nodded to himself as he held his chin thoughtfully. But he's not really, he's holding his hand up in the air. I see, an effort is being made to make sure everybody felt equally welcome. Um, yeah, uh, people seem to be getting left behind a lot in raids these days, I don't know why. I relaxed and found myself smiling. When I glanced at Fuma, he was wearing a frown. Huh. If everything had gone as planned, the person smiling next to me now would have been a beautiful girl. Okay. Oh, sorry, were you supposed to meet up with someone here? Kind of, but uh, not really. We were hoping to meet up, but it looks like she couldn't find... Actually, th this voice is too handsome for him. He seems like he's a bit of a... 
bit of a whiner, honestly. Kind of, but not really. We were hoping to meet up, but it uh, looks like she couldn't find me. A sudden realization dawned on me. No wonder I felt so familiar with this stranger. He was in the same situation as me. Oh? Were we supposed to be meeting someone? Me too. Huh? It's not like we made a promise to meet her or anything, but I was hoping to meet a certain somebody here too. Oh, I see. You were searching for her when I saw you. Since you came over to sit with me, I assume you didn't find her? I shrugged in response. To think like a coincidence like that could happen. I mean, it's not that big of a coincidence. Two similar people with similar objectives bumping into each other as if it were all planned. Okay, it's not some kind of like grand design going on here. This is a pretty normal coincidence. What a coincidence. Hmm? Something bugged me in the back of my mind. But it was soon forgotten as the orchestra started to play. The, student began, the students began to sing in chorus. Imagine the future. That's a pretty weird name for a school anthem. Is it? I mean, I don't know much about school anthems, but imagine the future doesn't sound that weird. But are we, are we hinting at some kind of time travel thing? Is that where this story's going? It's not the school anthem. It's a theme song. Theme song? What's the difference? I don't know. Imagine the future, huh? The future. The future, future, future. Hey, Yuda, shouldn't you get going? Orientation is going to start soon. The crowd had left the auditorium, and I could hear Fuma typing on its laptop next to me. Even though the ceremony was over and everyone had left, for some reason, I didn't feel like getting up. With the excited buzz of anticipation gone, the auditorium felt hollow. I stared at the slope of empty seats before me. So, Fuma, what are you typing anyway? Hmm? I'm just updating my SNS, uh... About the ceremony. About the entrance ceremony. Uh, that's like a Japanese thing, right? Like, is it like Facebook or Twitter or something? Probably like Twitter. Really? Thanks. Wh what was that for? Because you're actually waiting for me, aren't you? He could post from his phone while he walked if he wanted to. You could say that, I guess. Uma scratched his cheek awkwardly. Oh, uh, were you waiting for that girl you were talking about? Uma stopped mid-sentence and rose. You're just basking in the sentiment of this place, right, Yuta? Familiar voice said as she propped an elbow on my head and rested her cheek in her palm. You propped an elbow on my... I'm, I'm struggling to imagine what exactly that pose looks like. I, I guess we're sitting down still? So she's... Okay. Okay, I think I'm getting the idea of how she stood. Not exactly. Without turning back at the woman resting her weight on my head, I sighed. The truth is, I didn't get up because I didn't know where to go next. It wasn't as if I was aware of the orientation schedule. I decided to transfer this, to this university because of my admiration for my sister. Oh, is this our sister? So I studied hard and finally made it in, but... What next? Blank notebooks in my bag felt heavy. This was my goal. While these thoughts ran across my mind, Uma was opening and closing his mouth like a fish while he pointed at the person standing behind me. What, 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 who is that, Yuda? Who is the beautiful lady standing behind you? My goal. What? Don't tell me she's who you're waiting for. No, no, not at all. Come on, introduce yourself. I urged the person behind me. What else is there to tell him? I am a beautiful lady, especially to you. Oh boy. Oh boy, I don't like this subtext at all. Especially to you? What is this? Don't tell me you two are an item. No, that's not it. Can't you tell? She's my sister. Sister. Sister? You must be joking. Unfortunately, no, I'm not. What do you mean, unfortunately? Isn't God unfair? Mysteries of genetics? Uma muttered as he compared me and my sister. Oh, shut up. The woman standing behind me with an invincible smile on her face is Rina Kiriha. What, what, what is this? Super smart, beautiful, athletic piece of art. That's a weird thing to think about your sister. 
Oh, apparently that, that's what her fairy godmother chanted when she was born. <laughs> yes, it's very weird. Like they, the music started when they said that the like orchestra started playing, and I'm like, this is the music that the orchestra is playing for an entrance ceremony. It's uh, very uh, goofy. She was my sister, and everything I aspired to be. I envy you. I envy you, Yuta. To think you spent your childhood under one roof with someone like that. What a fucking weird thing to say. That's a weird thing to say. I'm already not liking where this novel's going. Yeah, yeah. I get that all the time. Under one roof with her? There's nothing... Actually, nothing much to envy about that. She might look like a perfect beauty when she's out and about, but when she's home, she takes her clothes off and leaves them lying around. I would... Why would you say that? She barges into my room whenever she pleases, and when she's drunk... Um... Okay, I guess I gotta read this. Yuta, seems like you want me. And me. To kill you! Oh, that's, um... I'm glad that that's where that, that sentence was going. So, sorry. Looks like I've thrown myself to the sharks here. Why are you here anyway, Rena? What do you mean, why am I here? I'm a student too. I have to attend my own opening ceremony. Although I may have come a bit early. Oh, of course. The music is quite orchestra-y. Yes. My sister was formerly a student of the University of Tsuka... <laughs> Hang on, I did figure this out. Uh, Tsukuba, I think is how it's pronounced. University of Tsukuba. But she was entering graduate school this year. It was her first year, too, just like us. Wait, it was her first year, too, just like... A, oh, I guess at the the new university, because we're third years. So it can't be our first year, but it's our first year here. Hmm, you don't look too enthusiastic. You look as if you've finished whatever you've come here for. That's not good at all. Why do you say so? Why don't we take a walk together and talk? I've got some time to kill. You've missed your chance to join the orientation crowd, and don't know where to go anyway. I had nothing to say because she was right. We followed her lead toward the third cluster on campus where the College of Information Sciences were, and where orientation was being held. Getting back to our conversation. Stopping in front of a fountain, Rena cut off Fuma's string of questions with one of her own. Why did you two enter this university? She pointed directly at us and asked us with a serious face. You don't have to tell me the reason if it's too personal. I just need to know if you have a reason or not. If you can proudly say you do, then all is fine. So do you? She asked Fuma. Of course I do. Fuma replied loudly. Very good. So, my dear brother, how about you? This is my goal. That was the only answer I had. Silence? Well, I suppose that is an answer in itself. Now that I know you're empty, at least, you can be sure you're... You can be sure that you're sure of nothing. What do you mean? Look, Yuda. This isn't the goal, the achievement. It's your start line. Whether it be glory, the past holds nothing. Your possibilities are in the future. Remember that. Like, we're getting a lot of future talk here. I'm getting the feeling that we might be doing some time traveling. The idea of destiny and predestination. That's just the vibe I'm getting. I understand how lust you can feel. To complete an objective that was determined your that has determined your direction for so long. I don't know how to pronounce exclamation points. But still, you must move on. What awaits you is never in the past. It's always in the future, boys. Let's... It is in the past, and that's where we're headed! <laughs> yes, the orchestra is now following the students and is equipped with synthesizers. Well, it's not even following the main students. We're just two people who broke off from, like, the rest of the group. Well, three people, I guess, now. What? Words are overrated. Hi, Big Hattie. Good to see you. Good to see you. Um, today we're playing uh, Campus Notes Forget Me Not, and where we think that uh, the future might uh, come into play in this story, but other than that, we don't know. 
Wow, you never fail to impress me. How you perceive everything. Not everything. It's because it's about you, my brother. Of course I'd understand. She gave me a mischievous wink. And the effect was lost on me. It was lost on me, got transferred directly to Fuma, who was standing right beside me. Oof. Yuda. Fuma whispered into my ear. <laughs> what? Why is he whispering in my ear now? Can I marry your sister, please? Ugh. Why are you asking me? Ask her. I'd suggest otherwise. My sister had a slight flame, but hidden in her slender arms was a legendary punch so ferocious we had named it the Lightning Excalibur. As you do, that's a very normal name to name things. Zun! It didn't even sound like a punch, more like a stab. Victims in the past claimed the distinctive noise was the product of a fist that surpassed the speed of sound. <laughs> She's your sister too! It was my sister's last known resort, when men that wooed her wouldn't leave her alone after she had declined them plat- If she's declined them, they haven't wooed her. They have failed to woo her. Uh, Rena declared she wouldn't date anyone unless they were tough enough to withstand it, but in my opinion, that was pretty much impossible. I didn't think I wanted Fuma to face the same bloody fate as the others. But oblivious to my concern, Fuma looked determined to win her over. For starters, why don't you decide on a club activity to join? Club activity? I imagine it would be hard for you to find a new objective immediately. Why not make enjoying your campus life the first step? You don't have to feel like you don't have the privilege, just because you're a transfer student. Just try your hand at everything, and if you don't like it, stop. If you find something interesting, spend more time on it. If you simply sit there pondering, you'll never find anything. You need to do something. Trial and error is what God has made us. Trial and error is what God has made us to do. Trial and error? Really? Okay. You say so. Your college life has just begun. Make as many mistakes as you can. And among that, grasp something that is irreplaceable. Actually, I need to just check. Am I? Oh, I'm covering up a lot of the text. Maybe I'll, uh, uh, maybe I'll hide, uh, my avatar so you guys can read along. Um... Something irreplaceable? Yes, ma'am! Visual novels are just soap operas in a more boring format? Yeah, that's probably true. Yeah, there, there definitely is a, a certain level of um, uh, melodrama to your average visual novel. They're rarely um, uh, sober pieces of media. Excellent response. Yuda, I have no idea who you were looking for, but you found yourself good company. He's a good friend. Well, actually, well, we actually just met each other now at the ceremony. You're right, though. He's a good guy. Yeah, we were strangers. You seem a decent sort. Me and Fuma looked at each other and nodded. Rina looked at us thoughtfully. Hmm? Since when? Huh? Since when did two strangers become friends, hmm? What, what is this question? Uh... Ah... Uh, if you can't... If you can't answer, I'll decide for you. Today, at this very moment, you've become friends. Nah. Whoa, this is... What is this? This is so bizarre. This is not how normal people interact. Uh, okay. Nice to meet you, I guess? We shook each other's hands just because it seemed like the right thing to do. Haha, <laughs> you both seem awkward, but in time, that will lessen. Why is this acting like this is our first day of, like, elementary school, not that we're third-year, uh, students at university? Yuta, I have one last piece of advice for you. Know yourself and accept yourself. It all begins from there. I mean... Is she going to disappear from our lives forever? Why is she giving us all this advice? Like, it feels like we're never going to see her again. After Rena left, I kept repeating her words to myself as we made our way to our... made our way to orientation. Since when does someone become a friend? I glanced at Fuma. <sighs> I wish Rena-san was you, Tan. 
What does that mean? Does anyone know what that means? Is he wishing that uh, she was his big sister? It's probably written by someone with the social skills of a visual novel writer. Yes, exactly. He murmured as he stared at his phone. Uh, what? I suddenly remembered, remembered the dread that bugged me during the opening ceremony. I quickly got my phone out to check my SNS timelines. Okay, so it looks like this is, um... Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yuten is a, a character, I guess. So it looks like this is, like, uh, Twitter or something. But it has timelines, so maybe more like Facebook? I don't know. Yuten. Ah, fum fum. Oh, I guess Fum Fum's Fuma. So you're... So you're entering the universe. Oh, hang on, let me, let me think. Well, what is this kind of... So you're entering the University of Su... Uh, God, this is going to trip me up every time. So you're entering the University too? It would be nice if we could see each other there. I feel like she's got more of a monotone voice. Maybe that's because of the silver hair, the red eyes. Um, whoa, that's, that's Fuma's uh, avatar? Oh, boy. Oh, boy, Fuma. I'll save, a, I'll save a seat for you. Last row, row in the middle, to my right. Dot, 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 I recall the seat I was sitting in just moments ago. The last row. In the middle. To the right of Fuma. Fuma, don't tell me your SNS username is at Fum Fum. Huh? How did you know? Dot, 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 dot. Why so serious? Um, you've got a follower named Yutan, don't you? <laughs> yes, it's been very bizarre music all, all along, right from the get-go. Apparently the, um, the opening ceremony was taking place in a carnival. Yeah, ding, ding, ding. Yeah, I can hear, I can hear what you're, you're getting at, uh, Hattie. That's me. Oh, where you, Tom? Oh, boy. Oh, boy, what a... So... It wasn't a coincidence that we met each other. We'd already arranged beforehand, we just didn't know we were we. I couldn't tell him now that I thought he was a girl all this time. That whenever he posted something, in my mind, I converted it into a girly voice of the anime character he chose as his avatar. Oh, okay, so, so I should have just used um, my uh, Yuta voice for um, Yuta. That I had thought maybe he was my destined soulmate, the way we shared the same interests and chose the same school. Well, we still could be soulmates. I don't see why that's changed just because he's a boy. I couldn't tell him now. Heck no, I couldn't tell him. Life was so unfair. Why did he have to sound so cute on the web? Why couldn't he just talk like a boy when he posted stuff the way he did now? It would have prevented so much misunderstanding. But as I looked at Boomer again, his hand clutching his phone was trembling. Give me back my dreams! Give me back my hopes! He screeched painfully, mortified. His voice echoed across the vast campus. Um... Okay, that's... Okay, I guess that was the end of the prologue. To the north of Tokyo, across abandoned fields and farmlands in the Kanto Plains, is where the University of Tsukaba, Tsukuba is. It may be built in the countryside, but it is a mammoth school hosting around 10,000 students. Hang on, I gotta take another drink. It is suddenly so hot in here. Ah, I feel my mouth dying out. The variety of posters pasted around campus easily went over a hundred. A few weeks had passed since the opening ceremony. I was walking through the first district in campus, browsing through the bulletin boards, hoping to find a club activity I could join, as Rena had suggested. I was glazing over the glossy posters printed in bold colors. It wasn't anything in particular I was looking for. To put it positively, that meant every group looked like a possibility. Every introduction looked like a door to the future. Again, we're talking about the future. But I couldn't join every single one. That would take up my entire time here. Some students were known to join clubs with an ulterior motive to attend welcome parties so they could score a free dinner and save some money. Our sense of morals was too high to do so, though. So, where are we going to get our free dinner? I'll rephrase. My sense of morals was too high to do so. Hey, look at this one. They're welcome parties and all you... Uh, eat all you want barbecue. Is that right? 
have a strong sense of morals. A weird place for the exclamation point, but okay. Look, this one's offering sukiyaki. Meat, 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 meat. Of course, that's a normal thing to say. Grr. Stop. Both of you, Boomer and my stomach. After much discussion and moral debate, we decided we had three options to choose from. First option, I could join an otaku club, something that the University of uh, Tsukuba was known for. Second option, I could join a rock band and live my campus life devoted to music. The last option, find something other than a legitimate club activity. How are those two just the only options for legitimate club activities? Those don't sound legitimate at all, really, when it comes to clubs. At university? Otaku or rock band? So, what should I do? Okay. Oh, oh. We apparently have options, but... Does this mean we're going to come back to this option at some point? Is there going to be some kind of time loop? Some kind of time travel? That's what I'm getting the feeling. It's a small school with only 10,000 students. I'm, that's what I'm suspecting why these options are here, but grayed out. I get the feeling we're going to come back here at some point. Find something else. Oh, that said turkey. What does turkey mean? Hmm. Oh, sorry, wrong voice. Hmm. I wonder if the, uh, there is anything else that we could do other than these club activities. Time travel with it. The time gob. Uh, <laughs> I can't do it. time gob voice. <laughs> you wonder if there's a meat club? What do you mean? Like a charity group? No, nothing like that. More like, you know, something exciting that's unreal and thrilling and... Boomer cocked his head at my vague ramblings. You mean you don't want to do any sports or table games of some sort? Yeah, something like that. Yuda, don't tell me you're not going to try any of these pinned here just because they don't fit your criteria. Um... Boomer was pretty sharp. Well, going home can be pretty productive too, can't it? <laughs> Try saying that to Rena-san. Well, I, I... Should I... Okay, I guess I should say, try saying that to the lioness, but maybe it's telling me that he's referring to Rena-san when he says that? Uh, try saying that to the lioness. Boomer, how dare you call my sister that? Although you're right, I can't tell her that. If I made excuses for myself, I'd get eaten alive. I wouldn't mind getting eaten by Rena-san. Yuck. Yuck. Dude, that's my sister. Why the fuck would you say that to me? For her, I'm a docile gazelle, hanging my head. Come to think of it, it's been the trend to categorize boys as carnivores or herbivores. But herbivores tend to be more numerous and mate more often. What is this? What is this? What? What? There's been a trend to categorize bo boys as carnivores or herbivores? What, what does that mean? I, I think this is a, a, like another kind of Japanese... Thing that doesn't quite translate. <laughs> yes, everyone in the chat, tell me who you'd want to get eaten by. Oh, all right. I'll find something. I wouldn't want my sister to eat something that might be bad for her health anyway. You're saying I'm bad for her? Hey, let's look somewhere else. This isn't the only bulletin board for societies and clubs recruiting members. <laughs> Are we heading to a TOS violation novel? I hope not. I mean, I, I'll, cut this, I'll, I'll shut this down if this, um, this turns out to be raunchy, but I, I couldn't find any uh, mature warnings uh, of that nature. At least not on like the Steam page or anything. Uh, you just changed the topic. Looks like there are some combined welcome parties among some circles too. We could try attending some of those. Nothing will ever beat uh, Panzer medals. It's immature raunchiness. We wouldn't know what kind of people there are unless we meet them anyway. You'd, uh, you'd prefer someone with cute girls, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, I do, I do. Let's go. I pulled on Fuma's arm and led the way, which wasn't something I did that often. I mean, these two seem like they're going to be a nice couple, Fuma and Yuta. I don't know why they need to go around meeting new, new people. Thank girl dating sim. 
my concern is their pans apart because that that's that's the German tanks, right? I, there's a, a weird fascination with um World War II German military in Japan that uh, makes me quite uncomfortable, considering which side of the war they were on. And why are you taking me back to the student residence? Oops. Oops, indeed. Ah, oh, you're terrible. But you made the wrong move. During this time, all the clubs are desperate to recruit new students. The student residence is surrounded by people handing out flyers. What? what And so, I'm going to chat up the cute girls with flyers. My radar's on. Hmm, I sense a beautiful, fragile girl in need of rescue nearby. This way. Yeah. <laughs> as if, there's no way you could tell with your fake radar. My voice trailed off as I looked in the direction Fuma was pointing. Devilwood, you'd like, be like to be eaten by NPRCD? Okay. I'll write that down in my notebook. <laughs> Objectifying women is old hat. This is why so many of these games womify objects. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's that line from The Big Lebowski. He treats women, <laughs> he treats objects as if they're women. <laughs> Please, hang on. Now this, this definitely seems like a, a monotone emotional scale. Uh, please, take a flyer. Just one will do. A woman stretched out a slender arm and waved her flyer to the people walking by. They ignored her, but she didn't give up. She had a thin voice, pale skin, and light-colored hair. Each time she was rejected, she placed her hands on her chest and looked down in despair. I thought she was holding flyers. How is she putting her hands on her chest? Look, she's perfect, like a modern version of the Little Match Girl. Not a single floor. Um, okay. I always imagined the Little Match Girl as being, you know, a girl, not a, a woman. Maybe don't compare uh, someone you find attractive to a little girl. Please, have a flyer. Please, just take one. Oh. Perhaps she had tried too hard. She lifted her hand to her mouth and began to cough. Then she squatted on the spot, as if she didn't feel well. Oh no! The damsel is in distress! I must go to the rescue! Hey there! Are you alright? Your knight in shining armor, Fuma, is here. Dude, just ask if she's alright. You don't need to come in with all of this. This is way too much, Fuma. You've got to, like, dial it back about, like, ten notches. Uma ran towards her eagerly, and the woman turned her head this way sharply in a manner of creatures in horror movies. What? Oh, oh, I, look at that face. That's interesting. Oh, boy. I think we're about... I think we're about to see a real turn. <laughs> You've cring, cringed many times watching this game already. Well, that's why we're playing it. This is uh, a cringe... Cringe Saturday. Saturdays are a good day for cringing. I thought I saw her eyes shine dangerously. What? I was about to rub my eyes in case I had made a mistake when a breeze swept by. One of the flyers she had dropped blew onto my face. It read, Looking for darlings that will call me every morning, Art. Huh? I pulled the flyer off my face to take a better look at it. Yuta, careful! Clamp. 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 Looks like she's got a second set of eyes above her eyes. Yeah, there's um, there's an in interesting amount of lines going on there. Uh, I'm not quite sure <laughs> that I can tell what's going on. What? The woman had made her way to me and grabbed onto my shoulders. She wasn't being aggressive. She simply leaned the weight against me as if she needed support. Uh, it, I don't know, that, that to me doesn't seem like the face of someone not being aggressive. <laughs> Yeah, closed eyes above her open eyes, glowing lava eyes. She relaxed so naturally, as if she had walked too much and decided to lean against a wall. Then, she lifted her face and came closer. Oh, oh. Oh, what happened to her nose? I know she's sniffing, but her nose appears to have become lopsided and moved up her face a bit. And I can still see her closed eyes above her normal eyes. You think Leisureless Suit Larry is less objectifying? Yeah. Sniff, sniff. 
She smelled me. What? She smelled me? It was the first time we met, and this pearl beauty was smelling me? The only saving grace was that she was smelling me not like an advertisement for deodorant, but like an advertisement for food. Does, uh, does Yuta go around smelling advertisements? Is that what that's saying? He goes around smelling like posters for like burgers and stuff? Cause uh, that's a very strange thing to do. She looked up and smiled menacingly. I could see her pointy canines poking out of her red lips. Was this really that weak looking woman handing out flyers just now? Whatever happened to cause this change during the last few seconds I was blinded. Well actually it happened before we were blinded. She had that awful smile uh, before the flyer hit us in the face. <laughs> Wanna smell me? I've showered this week. Pointy tooth woman. Okay, she's now called pointy tooth woman. Boy. The thin high voice was replaced with a husky elto. Oh, elto. Uh, boy. Uh, 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 husky elto. Elto, elto's high, right? Alto sax, that's like the higher sax. As opposed to like a, like a bass or a tenor. Um, boy. Y yes, I'm full grown, by the way. Weird thing to mention. You have tomato juice in your bag. Uh, excuse me? She was breathing heavily. Maybe it was because she'd been coughing, or because she had rushed to my side. Or maybe something else was exciting her. Alto is low female range? You're an alto, okay. So it's, it's low for a woman. Okay. She's a, a vampire. She's, yeah, yeah, well, I mean, pointy teeth, uh, very, um, seems to be luring people in and then being very predatory. And then tomato juice, that does sound like uh, a vampire, like, Oh, she's got normal eyes again. You have tomato juice, right? Uh, yes. I trembled. I had a can of tomato juice in my bag. Why would you have a can of tomato juice in your bag while you're just wandering around campus? Whoop. Okay, here we go. The other day, I bumped into my sister and she gave it to me, claiming I was probably living off instant food and needed better nutrition. How is tomato juice better nutrition than just instant food? In a can. Canned tomato juice. Give her some Clamata. Sopranos is a TV show. Alto is what a, <laughs> a German Australian would call an old person. She never brought me things usually, and I knew that I wasn't fond of, and knew that I wasn't fond of tomato juice, and purposely gi given it to me. She was evil. Unless she's also traveled from the future and she's setting things up knowing that we're going to meet this vampire who loves tomato juice if there's not going to be any like um time travel in this i'm going to be very disappointed now but i didn't throw it away because it was a gift after all that's why it was in my bag of course she gave you a thing that you hate but you're not going to throw it away you're just going to carry a can everywhere you go for the rest of your life so yes i had a can of tomato juice how did she smell it through the can? Can I have it? What is this expression? What is going on here? Oh boy. What, how is your mouth like that far above your chin? That, there's something going on there that uh, I can't tell. She stuck her hand out. Wh what? I'm so thirsty, I'm gonna die. If you give it to me, maybe something good will happen. Like that old children's story. Warashibe Kuja. Warashibe Kuja? Yeah, Warashibe Kuja. You, you all know that uh, classic uh, uh, children's story, Warashibe Kuja? A thirsty merchant gave an expensive roll of cloth in exchange for an orange, didn't he? Hurry, get your Hello Kitty crucifix. <laughs> she's not a vampire, she's a can opener girl. I, I would definitely play that visual novel where the girls are all based off of, um, different uh, kitchen implements. I would definitely play that. I don't have any expensive cloth with me now, but I could take my clothes off in exchange. Oh boy. Look, one, two, 
Oh boy, here we go. She said as she slowly undid her buttons. I waved my hands in protest. Please, you don't need to do this. Please stop. Oh dear, I'm going to end up naked in the middle of this street because this boy won't give me his tomato juice. Oh boy. Fucking anime. Sounds like a stable dream woman. Wait, it isn't like that. You're threatening me now? Wow, Yuta. You're being bullied by a pretty woman over a can of tomato juice. Uma, do something. Pretty women don't intimidate people over a can of tomato juice. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying <laughs> you need to carry uh, around tomato juice with you now? Yeah, apparently we should all be carrying tomato juice around with us. Or else women will start getting naked in our presence. You make it sound like a subtitle to a novel. That sounded like a subtitle to you, Uma? What kind of novels are you reading? Instead of standing there observing, why don't you help me out here? Hey, should I? This is entertaining! Some friend you are. I stuck my hand into my bag and took the can of juice out. The woman snatched it away before I could offer it. Contrary to my expectations, that she would empty it immediately, she opened it with a clean pop after shaking it well. She would empty it immediately? Why would you think it's a can? <laughs> I mean, I guess maybe it's one of those bull, bull pops, but why would anyone open up a can of tomato juice here in the middle of this pathway? <laughs> Thanks, heart. Bon appetit. Or to me. She drank the contents with a look of pure satisfaction. Seeing her drink it that way almost could. Oh! So, when they're saying tomato juice, they mean it's like a. It's, oh. It's like a. Like a. Like a. Not like a soft drink, but like it's in one of those kind of cans. Like this is a normal thing to drink. Own eight tip. Yes, exactly. It's lovely to hear you uh, really bring the music out in the language, Hattie. It's like horny surrealism. Yes. Okay, so it, this is a normal thing to be drinking. Okay, and it seems less... I was imagining like a proper can opener type of can. I was not expecting... Um... Yeah, no, I, I don't know. I, I thought it was going to be... I, I, I thought it was more industrial can size, not drink can. Seeing her drink it that way almost convinced me tomato juice was a wonderful thing, despite my distaste for the beverage. Although it makes it even less sense as to why our sister gave it to us, saying that we're probably only ha having um, instant ramen and stuff. She just gave us a drink. That's not anything. That's not going to be, like, nutritious enough for us. <laughs> it may still be in a classic food tin. Oh, God. Oh, what is going on now? Whoa. We go from one high to another. Ah, that's refrig- yeah. <laughs> she choked, spluttering everywhere. Jesus Christ, what is going on? Ah, the tomato juice! The red liquid went all over me. The woman with pointy canines continued to cough, and finally fell to her knees. She glared up at me, vengefully. You! <laughs> going on? <laughs> you! How dare you worry about your clothes when a woman is in pain before you? Oh, of course. Sorry. Are you alright? I bent over and rubbed her back. As if she had been waiting for it, she brought her hand to her mouth and began coughing again. Cough, cough. Oh, so this is how my life ends. She looked at the red liquid on her palm and muttered woefully. I felt bad because I couldn't keep up with her. Please, stop that. You just choked on tomato juice. What a way to die. It's tomato juice. Tomato juice! This makes you hungry? <laughs> as genuinely intriguing as this is, you gotta get some sleep. That is perfectly fine, TG. Thank you for the raid. Always great to see you here. Great to see all of you as well, and everyone lurking as well. Um, yeah, but you go get some rest, TG. And I'll see you around. See you next, next time you're streaming. 
Might need to uh, well assume. Yes, yes, of course. All of you uh, Americans, go get some sleep. This isn't uh, worth uh, staying up for. This is how you're starting your day? Yes, yeah. Well, it's an unusual time for me to be streaming. You do want to see where this goes? And you got D&D in the morning. Oh, uh, well, I mean, you've... I guess, I guess you're a grown man, Bruxis. You can make your own decisions about these things, but... There is always the VOD if you're really just to see where this is going. Well, starting, yeah, it's... Yeah, it's 10 in the morning for you. Patty. Uh, I took her hand and patted it encouragingly. Her hand was smooth and cold. Oh, cold hands. Is that another sign of a vampire? Sorry. Looks like the time has come. Thanks, all of you. It was fun while it lasted. It's tomato juice, for God's sakes. Tell Mom I love her. And carry me to the shade. Flop. Her hand fell lifeless to the ground. Tomato juice! <laughs> Yuda, you're making it look like... Oh, whoa, I, I got the wrong voice there. Yuda, you're making it look like it's the tomato juice that just died. I don't know her name. Is that even important? Um, miss, are you alright? I shook her, but she didn't open her eyes. I held my hand to her lips. Don't do that. Don't touch people, Flip. She wasn't breathing. There were easier ways to tell that than touching her face. Her hands were so cold, but that was her usual state. What do you mean that was her usual state? We only just touched her hands as she was passing out. <laughs> this is the point where you just walk away. Her chest? I didn't touch, because it looked, might look like I'm groping up. Thank you. Don't touch her chest. Doesn't seem necessary, unless you were about to perform CPR, in which case, it still doesn't involve touching her breasts. I took her wrist and tried checking for a pulse. No way. Wh what's wrong? She... She doesn't have a pulse. Wh what? Don't be stupid. I don't know why it would be stupid. She just collapsed. Uma hurried to my side and picked up her wrist. What? You're right. You mean she's dead because of... Tomato juice? For real? We can't leave her here. Let's carry her somewhere. Let's call an ambulance. Call a fucking ambulance. Let's not stop moving dead bodies around. That doesn't seem necessary. She said she wanted to be carried into the shade, didn't she? You also love how lazy these things are when they don't actually bother illustrating 90% of what's being shown. On school days, you have to get up at 6.40. Fuck. God. Damn, that's so early. Shouldn't we call an ambulance first? Yes. Call an ambulance. Get medical help. Moving her is not the priority here. Getting immediate medical help would be the priority. No thanks. See? See? She says she doesn't need one. Yuda, you hold her arms. Wait, who spoke just now? There's no time to think of that. This is an emergency. He was so definite, I began to think he was right. We lifted her up together and carried her by our shoulders. Her silky hair brushed against my fingers, and I felt my heart... Don't get excited about what you believe to be a dead body. Don't do that. <laughs> Th this isn't the time to be excited. She might even be dead by now. <laughs> it's just her standing pose lying down. All they've done is change the background. <laughs> so now we're looking at the floor. We carried her towards a bench in the shade. Our minds still confused as to what had happened. Oh, we're not going to get uh, a bench in the background now. We'll just keep it on the floor here. 6.40 so you can get the kids up and dressed. We leave at 7.20 to make it to the bus that leaves at 8. Yeah, that, that's... God, it's cool, man. God, it was crazy how early it always started. Oh, it's so nice to be carried by someone else. Now I heard that clearly. I dropped her. Ow! Maybe you really killed her this time. Maybe. Yuda. Sorry. Although, I understand how you feel. What should we do now? She's probably alright. Let's just leave her by the bench and go. 
She could be troublesome to hang out with. Hey, I thought you wanted to befriend a fragile beauty. She wasn't what I expected. Uma's shoulders sagged in disappointment after we laid her down on the bench. My radar isn't very trustworthy, is it? Wait, that's you to say. My radar isn't very trustworthy, is it? Good night. Okay, Barksis. See you next time. Tell Vampy McVampface uh, you said bye. I will certainly, um, certainly will. Um, yeah, see you next time. Hopefully you'll, you'll be streaming sometime soon. See you then. Okay, let, let's, let's think. She looks kind of preppy, although she's holding a... What is that? A, a, a trowel. Like, it's a, uh, like she's gonna stab us with it, so... Um, do you need any help? We turned around to see a surprised face peering out from the bushes. She had a small spade in her hand, covered in mud. So I surmise she'd been doing some gardening. She looks even more childlike. I would call that a trowel, not a spade, but okay. I guess we'll call a spade a spade. She looks even more childlike, but with big honkers. And that's the most important part. That I could understand. What took me by surprise with it was that she was a very pretty woman in fluffy white clothes. Her cheeks were smeared with mud, and she had a twig sticking out of her ponytails on each side of her head. And they couldn't possibly draw a twig. Sticks are way too hard to draw. You thought it was a sword. <laughs> yeah, it looks kind of like a knife, especially like this the shiny part here. You don't see, you don't see the the darker side of the um, trowel to begin with, so it just looks like she's holding a knife at us. It was as if she had fallen from the sky and no one had caught her. This was strange. We stared at each other and froze. Um. I could see a light bulb go on in her head. I've got a hold dog. What? I've got a hole dug over here. Do you need to bury that? No, this isn't a crime scene. <laughs> I was just kidding. The woman with the spade giggled. She took in the situation pretty well. For a name such as Su Tsukuba Science City, this place is surrounded by forest and trees. I wouldn't be surprised if there were a few dead bodies hidden around. That's a great way to introduce yourself. She had a pretty face, but she sure had a morbid imagination. You don't think so? Okay. I've already found a few bones that don't belong to stray animals lying around. Um, are you telling me you've discovered multiple crime scenes? You th oh, you think she's a werewolf? Oh, that's um... That's definitely a possibility. We've got a vampire, a werewolf, possibly some time travel going on. That's interesting. That's a, a yes. Digging holes like a dog. Okay, and all oh, this fluffiness could be like her ears, like or hiding her ears. Maybe she has like doggy ears. What? Uh, I'm more surprised that you intended to bury a human with such a small spade. Rumor. Rumor, that's not the important th uh, thing here. She's just admitted to discovering, or possibly even causing, multiple murders. A wear poodle. Yes, yes. It would be possible if we cut her to bits, right? Hehe. <laughs> Don't say such things. I had a suspicion that the woman on the bench trembled a bit. I guess we do look like murders if you look at the scene from afar. Yeah, okay. Let's leave this place before any further misunderstandings. Huh? Uma stopped his sentence halfway. He could feel something watching us intently from the shadows. Oh, someone else. From a bush opposite the woman with the spade, a different woman was staring. She was wearing a beret. She watched us curiously, with large eyes that looked both mysterious and innocent at the same time. You... you saw everything? I saw everything. I saw everything! Two men, one woman, and a fallen maiden. Unfortunate consequences after a series of inapprehensible events. 
Rocky 10, worthy of suspense dramas, aired every Tuesday afternoon. Oh, Little Misfortune. And the dress on her fupa. Clingy. Oh. Oh, yes, yes, I see what you mean. It is a very uh, strange design. It's almost like she's wearing like a, a onesie. Made out of a sweater. Some kind of jumpsuit. You love the bulge? <laughs> Look here, boys, yay! Uh. Uh, the last bit was unnecessary. Make no excuse. Excuses are worthless pieces of junk at any time of the year. Don't move, you murderer. Wait, you misunderstand. No need to explain yourself. I doubt everything. And I will only believe in what I can see with my own eyes. My reality is confirmed only through my observations. Yes, I sound so cool. <laughs> I should, uh, sweater dress, it's a thing. You should, uh, people watch with you. Uh, you're hilarious. That does sound like a fun time, Devil Bird. The drunker I am, the cattier you can be. Well, that does sound like a great time. No, you don't. What? How did you hear my thoughts? You were saying them out loud. Ah. Uh, are you going to hunt me down? Destroying me because I am the only witness to your crime? I suppose you're going to chase me down and hit me on the head with a baseball bat like any good serial killer. And get rid of the witness. Oh, she's smiling while she says this. I suppose... <laughs> okay, okay. Let's get a tour bus and get Devil Bird drunk. She spoke as if her life was in jeopardy. The woman in the bray looked very happy about her predicament. Help me! I'm going to be killed! Wait, don't run away without letting us rectify our, your misunderstanding. She left. She laughed while she ran. She left, and we were still misunderstood. And Piazza's a sarcastic asshole too. He's hilarious. Yep, definitely sound like my kind of people. Ha! Hee hee, ha ha ha. I don't know who that was, but she... But she don't know. She doesn't know what she's dealing with. Any animal that runs away from me? Oh, yep. The, more of this predatory thing. You're, I think you're dead on about her being some kind of werewolf. Must be hunted down. What? Zoom. The woman with the spade left like the wind, chasing the woman in the beret. We could see them turn into specks in the distance. If my memory served, the woman with the spade was in high heels. It was impressive that she could run so fast. No! We heard a screech a while later. Looks like the witness has been taken care of. Guys, I think we just heard a murder happen. Now is not the time to be glib. It is. <laughs> I mean, she did mention possibly causing multiple uh, murders before. But they're very least discovering multiple murders. Uh, all is well then? No! We may be accessories to murder now, Fuma. We have to go on the run. Um, about the welcome parties. Yuta, sorry. I'm too tired to deal with that now. Yeah. I suppose that was all well for me, too. What was that all about? We left. When you do Spade and Beret is the achievement I just unlocked. That was chaotic. <laughs> if there's time travel in this, then it's also possible she was a Wenwolf. Yes, if I didn't know any better, I would be inclined to imagine something along the lines of Fate brings hero and heroine together, and romance begins from a misunderstanding with one of them. But the lesson we learned today is this. Here at Tsukuba, pretty girls are weird. I don't need the weird bit. I just want to oogle pretty girls. Uh, Fuma, don't give up hope. It's probably just today. You'll have better luck tomorrow. Maybe, maybe don't, maybe don't. Maybe don't. Google. Anyone, really. No, they say that things that happen twice happen thrice. 
But who says that? That's an insane saying. Uh, I think thrice already happened. The one with the pointy teeth, the spade, and the beret, I counted silently. Then maybe we'll find a fourth weirdo. Nah, I don't think they usually come by that often. I was about to turn Fuma's way and shrug. Oh. And now... Okay. But... Okay. Just going off of this. The emotional maturity in this. Yes, yes. Someone get him a flashlight. Uh, yes. And it is rather uh, sexist, but I suppose we can laugh at it. Um... Okay, guess it says to what kind of girl this is going to be. I see what appears to be a tail that is also uh, an extension cord. So, some kind of robot, maybe? Some kind of emotionless cyborg girl going by the, the silver hair? And is that a slipper there? Over on the right? Uh, left, rather? This is a, like a 12 year old boy pretending to be uh, deep. Maybe she's some kind of, I don't know, if we're continuing the theme of, uh... Well, actually, we didn't get a, a good idea as to what Bray girl might be. Maybe she's a normal human? This is talented middle school writing. Okay. Middle schooler with a... Uh, almost said thesaurus. Uh, with its thesaurus. A small figure jumped out from the shadow and bumped into my back. She fell over on her bottom. Don't need to mention her butt. Oops, are you okay? I was about to offer my hand, but went speechless. There on the ground was a strange-looking, beautiful girl that didn't fit in her, with her surroundings of the Tsukuba student residence halls. She looked like a doll. Some kind of automaton. You never learned English, Hattie? Oh, that's a shame. She had long platinum hair, bright as virgin snow. By the way her eyelashes glinted silver, I doubted she had bleached her hair or was wearing a wig. She looked young, but perfectly sculpted. Don't mention she looks young and then also say she's perfectly sculpted. Her face was completely symmetrical. Let's look like boobs and a close to lady playground. Must mention. <laughs> Jesus Christ, devil bird. And as if in rebellion, she had a small four painted on her right cheek. Oh, is that what that is? I wouldn't have called that a four ever. That looks more like a, a wave, like a stylized red wave or something. Girl with silver head. Fourth interruption. She looked up at me with an expressionless eye, with expressionless eyes of deep violet. Predictions for root design failed. Capacity for error tolerance exceeded. Erasuna block will be isolated in 150 seconds. Possibility for breakthrough? Zero. Exit lost. Um, sorry? Looks like I got in your way. Oh boy, she does look quite, uh, short and young. Don't you understand? No, you probably don't. The girl's expression contorted into one of disgust. For some people with particular tastes, Perhaps this would have been a reward, but unfortunately, I had not. Oh god, what the hell does that even mean? <laughs> moving on, moving on immediately. I'm not going to stop to think about that. <laughs> you had to grade English papers for teen boys, trust you. And this is <laughs> so cringy, it's making you want to shit. You should apologize, not because you have stood in my way because you do not understand the responsibility of your actions. I... I'm sorry. Sorry. I knew this would happen! Weirdo number four! But why is it always Yuta? Uta mu- oh. But why is it always Yuta? Uta muttered as he made a pout. It was inevitable. Aborting Plan C. Beginning Plan C. Plan B. Plan C? What? You will have to act as a node. Please show me your student identification number, you violator. Violator? Me? Who else? She glanced at Puma. I glanced at Puma. Very well. You too. Line up. You, you sold me! Puma glared at me, but I took his... 
took out his student ID nonetheless. We didn't even know what she was up to. She, he was too easygoing. I took out my ID too, now that I had no choice. Still feel like you have a, a ton of choices, really. You could just walk away from the child. Good. This will hurt a little, heart. She suddenly sounded so human, I felt afraid. But I had lost my opportunity to run. There, Star. Fireworks went off in my head. And I just got an achievement called Lightning Silver. Ah! I woke up in my room. I had dreamt of falling forever. My forehead was covered in sweat. It's... It's just a dream. I wiped my brow and rasped. It felt too real. But since when? I remember meeting several weird people, but I didn't think they were all a figment of my imagination. Hang on, just gonna take another drink. Uh, figment of my imagination. That's a bit of a shame. Oh, sorry, did he say that we did think that this was a figment of our imagination? I found myself thinking, although even if it hadn't been a dream, maybe I would never see them again. Hey, Fuma, you look down. It was after mathematics. Usually, Fuma would be the first to rush out the door, but today he leaned back in his chair with an expression of ennui. Hmm? Oh, something was on my mind. Oh, that's right. Hey, so uh, Keisuke? Keisuke. I'm gonna go with Keisuke. Oh, that's right. Keisuke. Fuma called out to the shooting with curly hair. But Keisuke looked at him as if to say, Who are you? And simply walked away. Huh? That's funny. That's the fifth... Fifth what? It's just... That's weird. I think I was on pretty good terms with him. Maybe you did something that made him angry. Hmm... I don't think so. Fuma was the type of guy that looked careless, but in truth, he was careful how he treated people. I was beginning to understand why people gravitated towards him. You finished high school in 4.5 years? Normally it takes three? Yeah. It takes you however long it takes you. I mean, I didn't finish high school at all. I was a high school dropout. And look at me now. Playing video games. Fringe-worthy video games on the internet. And then you did three years of media school before dropping out? If he said he hadn't done uh, anything to hurt someone, I was sure he was right. And then you did three years of ICT before dropping out? I was a pretty quiet person myself, so I understood if the other guy didn't feel like chatting. It may not have been polite, but it was nothing unusual. It's weird. What is? Nothing. You don't, aren't you going to submit your work? The professor's gonna leave soon. You didn't submit the last paper either, right? Oops, that's right. I was supposed to hand in both today. I couldn't afford not to hand in my work twice in a row. I ran to the front. Uh, I'm sorry, here's my attendance slip. You're late. And here's the paper from last week. Sir, you mentioned it was all right to submit it this week, remember? Last week? Sorry, I don't remember saying that. I hope you aren't lying about it. What? What? No, of course not. Did you even intend last week? The professor looked at me suspiciously through his glasses. This guy doesn't even get a drawing. Y yes, I gave you my attendance slip too. Really? I don't remember seeing you in my class. Hmm. Oh, you're right. You've got a tick on the on attendance in my book. That's funny. Hmm. Never mind. I'll take your paper this time. Next time, don't forget. Y yes, sir. Thank you very much. When I got back to my seat, Uma looked at it. Looked at my worriedly? I think that's supposed to be looked at me worriedly. Was everything okay? You look like you were in trouble. Uh, then years later, you realize you have both depression and ADHD. Now you're in your mid-30s and haven't finished anything. Not bitter at all. I mean... Ooh, how did I do that? Oh, scrolling up to, brings up a, a log, I guess. Okay. Oop. Wait, go back. Uh, 
Hang on, let's see. Uh, yes, uh, looked like you were in trouble. It's nothing. The professor didn't remember. Uh, it's nothing. The professor didn't remember our promise last week. You were there, weren't you, Fuma? Fuma didn't reply, but instead stared into my eyes with intensity. Okay, so scrolling down, we'll skip the stuff forward. That's kind of annoying. I hope I can turn that off for next time. I guess better late than never to get treatment and help, but you know, you do end up wondering how things could have been different. That's certainly true, yes. Problems like that do make you uh, uh, frustrated that, you know, they weren't brought up or, or that you weren't helped. Um, it took you 15 years to finish uni university. One class a semester was all you could afford. Wow, that's, uh, that's impressive though. It takes dedication to keep working at it for 15 years. Utah. What's the matter? You look so serious. Did you talk to anybody other than me or the professor today? Huh? No, I don't think so. Okay. Room aside, and then fell silent. We we're the only ones left in the classroom now. Just keep swimming? Yeah, that's good advice. Let's go home. So it seems like everyone in the world may have forgotten them for some reason. Because of what that girl did to us yesterday. Still the head one. Uma nodded, but didn't look as if he had heard what I said. Oh, it's Rena. What? Where? Uma perked up a bit as I pointed out the familiar figure walking away. What should I do? If Rena knew that I hadn't intended any welcome party or club activity, I was sure she was going to give me an earful. But I wasn't going to pretend I didn't see her. Hey, Rena! Rena san! Both of us yelled and she glanced at us. She made an expression as if she was suspicious of us and walked away. Aroi's sister has forgotten us. Ooh. You were able to teach during the time and change majors because of it. Oh, okay. Huh? Huh? Maybe she didn't hear us. But she looked our way, didn't she? That was weird. My sister loved to interfere in my life, for better or worse. She would never ignore me. Maybe we were standing against the light, and she couldn't see our faces? I could have run after her and tapped her on the shoulder. The cold feeling clenched my heart and stopped my feet. That's the sixth. Something's wrong. I knew it from the moment Haru didn't recognize me. Haru? Oh. I guess I haven't told you about her. She's my friend from childhood. Oh god, a childhood friend. Oh boy. She lives around here. I didn't know she had entered Suka Sukuba, but there's no way I could miss her. I called her name and she looked back too. She looked the same and she had the same name. She couldn't have been a different person. But she said she didn't know me. I don't know you. I've never seen you before, she said. Maybe she forgot your face because you haven't seen her for a long time. I just saw her this new year. She scolded me for not eating her cooking. His banged expression was enough to convince me he was telling the truth. Dread crept up my spine, and I turned my head in the direction Rena had gone. Sorry, Fuma. Can you wait here? I'll go after her. I ran before he could answer. Thankfully, Rena hadn't gone very far. But it felt as if there were miles between us. <laughs> I don't know you. That's my purse. Oh, God, that's a terrible um, Bobby, but... I do get the reference. Please, answer me. Tell me I'm being stupid, worrying about the silliest things. Rena! I yelled as I panted. She stopped and turned towards me slowly. All right, there it is. The other shoe is dropped. Who are you? In the same boat. Are these chapters? Cheer up. But... My sister. I almost cried. She said she didn't know me. And remembered that Fuma was in this... Ember... Oh, that, that was... That's a weird choice of, uh... Parentheticals. I almost cried. She said she didn't know me, and remembered that Fumu was in the same predicament I was. Sorry. 
After that, no matter how much I tried convincing her, she never acknowledged that I was her brother. She wasn't being mean or trying to punish me for not joining a club activity. She had just forgotten. I was a stranger to her. What's happening? I don't know, but it isn't anything fun. We've got to find people that remember us. the kids do in school, messages, grades, there's so much info and there's constantly notices and messages from school or what, for whatever boring or unnecessary reasons. You know it's for the kids benefit or whatever and for the helicopter parents but you don't want to know everything. You want to afford your kids the privacy of um, making mistakes if that makes sense. Yeah that makes sense but also at the same time um, you also got to think about like you know the fact that uh, this also like helps um, benefit uh you know kids like you hattie who who missed out on like diagnosis of adhd and stuff this kind of information stuff can be integral to to um identifying issues and, and getting kids the kind of support that they need so it's a uh, pros and cons pluses and minuses you know you've got to find people that remember us do you know anybody from the same school that transferred over? Oh, my voice is beginning to go. Hang on, let me take another drink. At least we've got some music to listen to while I, I'm drinking. Oh. Spilled water all over myself. You gotta sleep now, Neat? Uh, but you're lurker? Well, thanks for being here. Good to see you again, Neat. Always good to have you around, and I appreciate the lack. It's not that there aren't important messages, but it's mostly the equivalent of everyone on random Discord services. Servers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it, it's it's hard to to sort the wheat from the chaff, I guess. You know, it'd be one sixteen over here. Okay. Well, yeah. Thank you very much for showing up at all. Uh, I assume you mean one sixteen in the morning. So yeah, I definitely appreciate you uh, showing up, Nate. I don't have a alert command yet. I need to set up some commands, like some sound commands. I got tons of ideas, I just haven't gotten around to implementing them. But I suppose, you know, some of that sorting the, the wheat from um, the, the signal from the noise is, uh, you know, I guess part of being a parent, I guess. Someone's got to do it, I guess. You get information fatigue and then just end up missing stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's always a problem. I shook my head, no. And do you have... And do you have any friends you made here? The only the ones you introduced me to. I'm a solo player. And that's nothing to boast about. It also means we don't have much choice. I spoke to seven people today, including Haru. But apart from you, Yuta, the other six all didn't remember me. Is that why you called my sister the sixth? The number is this substantial... To Enough to say this isn't a coincidence. And I tried talking to my friends that I'm close with, too. And that included me and Rena. I'm glad you didn't become one of the funny ones, Yuta. Uma sighed in relief. No, I think I've gone funny, too. Huh? You mean some stranger came up to you as if, uh, as if they were familiar? No, nothing like that. It's just that it seems like I've lost my memory yet. Since last evening, I don't even remember how I got home or how I got to bed. You too? Huh? Uma? You too? Yes, luckily your uh, kids' ADHD issues are not uh, directly handled by school, but the municipal health care and social services. Yes, obviously th th those kinds of um, issues uh, shouldn't really be handled by a school, but... um. They are, you know, they are opportunities to, um, discover these issues in the first place. Your ADHD was totally ignored, uh, Devil Bird? Well, that, that's a real shame. That, uh, that sucks. Uh, I always, I always... I'm looking 
ways to help uh, improve the world that uh, people... Girls don't get it. Oh, fuck me. Yes. Yes. Or didn't back then. Yes, there, there's, a, there's always been a big gender gap when it comes to things like ADHD and uh, uh, autism spectrum disorder. Um, uh, in the genders that isn't necessary, uh, and they seem to think it seem to think for a long time that it was like endemic to these issues, but it just turns out that they were, you know, they, they weren't, weren't looking, you know. You was too, you were too smart and didn't apply yourself. Yes, yes, I hear you uh, entirely, Devil Bird. Yes. Healthcare person says yes, she is very strong ADHD, and the school says we need more. Ha- help with her and the city says okay we will arrange it yep that's exactly um that's exactly how you know in a equitable world these kinds of things should work you and your ex got tested and found out in your 30s because uh, both kids have it yeah that beautiful pointy toothed faker the twin ponytail spade girl eagerly eager on burying stuff that boyish beret witness that went running. That platinum girl. Hmm? Who's the last one? Um, the one that bumped into me after we left the pointy tooth one by the bench. You know, she spoke like a robot and she had long hair. Sorry, I don't know that one. What? Uma coughed as if to break the awkward silence. Anyway, there may be slight differences between what we remember. But the fact that we lost our memory after we met those weirdos is the same, right? Right. Then let's make it our priority to find them. You could help us find out what truly happened. All right, now that it's that's decided, I'll turn on my... Oh. All right, now that's decided, I'll turn on my radar. That again? But we've already established that it doesn't work. Hmm? I can sense it. And that away. Uh, I think most neurodivergent people are masking to what everyone thinks they should be. Yes, yes, that is definitely, um, I mean, that's, uh, you know, a big part of what can be so emotionally draining for, um, neurodivergent people is the, is not the, um, actual interactions, but the fact that you're trying to read other people and, uh, then, like, mimic them. You know, you're constantly, it's basically like being on stage. You know, you're, you're acting all the time. You have to put up this facade just to, uh, not freak other people out, almost. We didn't know our older daughter had it, because it is more, uh, the typical female ADHD, where it isn't so outwardly visible. They had concerns from school, and then we got the whole testing thing going. Our youngest was probably the reason we didn't notice, as she is the walking stereotype of ADHD. Yeah. Oh, bother. Oh, but we found her. When I looked at the door Fum was pointing at, it opened slowly, and a familiar-looking woman poked her pale face out. It's night? Uh, why didn't anybody wake me up? It's so dark. It's completely dark. That means I can't attend class. We're gonna have to repeat another year. No! It, it worked. Maybe I should call this my weirdo radar. What are you depressed about? This is exactly who we were looking for, Uma. Uma wiggled his fingers above his head. I don't know what that um kind of would make me. Hmm? You must have heard us. The pointy toothed woman's eyes flashed. Boy. She grabbed hold of my shoulders, and then she came close. Deja vu. Or rather, the running wall climbing stereotype. ADHD. Sniff, sniff, sniff. I knew she would smell me. Damn, you don't have any on you today. Useless. Oh, but she remembers us. She seems to remember that we had some the other day. Wait, did she just call me useless under her breath? Wait, did you just say today? You mean you remember us, Pointy Tooth? Don't call me Pointy Tooth. Togi Mayuzumi's the name. Call me Togi-chan. Okay, we finally have a name for Pointy Tooth. Togi. Besides, how could I forget? You scoundrels left me there lying on the bench. Miss, your resentment is unjustifiable. 
Next time we, oh, next time she's smelling us, we should fart. <laughs> What? What? What is this? What, what am I? What do I have to read? I'm covering my face, if you can't tell, because... What is this game? What is this? What, what, what do you mean? I don't understand you. I almost got a new fetish from that. She almost got a fetish from being left on the bench? Excuse me? Nothing. She waved her arms in a gesture to leave the topic. Togi chan -san. Why would he say chan -san? Okay. Togi chan -san. Did anything strange happen to you today? Like having a friend say they don't know who you are? Hmm? I wouldn't know. After all, I got back here and slept till now. You sleep too much. Usually, my friend wakes me up. Not today, Not today though. That was unusual. This is how women work? Yes, exactly. I mean, there, there must be people who go around in the world. Maybe not thinking... I mean, this is, you know, there is melodrama and stuff. People don't watch uh, soap operas thinking that they're representations of the real world. But you can't, you can't do good things to you, your idea of how the world works. Things like this. And I had a really important class to attend. Mm. What the fuck? <laughs> Maybe she figured out my new fetish. She's incredible. Uma, let's go. Toki chan san is useless. Hey, don't call me useless. Yeah, you're right. Let's find the other two. Are you listening to me? We were about to leave the pouting Toki san alone and find the other two when... Oh, here they are. Chi-chan, Chi-chan, look! Oh, this is the woman with spades. So she's, I think she has more of a gravelly voice. I'm recalling correctly. Look here, I found something. I thought something was n noisy, but yesterday's murderers and that cadaver are here. Sorry for all the noise, just taking another drink. Who are you calling a cadaver? Who are you calling a murderer? You're the one that suggested chopping the body up to little pieces, if I remember correctly. You mean, you all remember us? Oh, you're alive. <laughs> What's more, it seems like she's taken a great liking to me. Chi-chan, yay! We found them! The girl with the spade tried rubbing herself against the girl with the beret like a kitten, but was being fought off. You know, as you do, you rub yourself against uh, a person you met the day before. That's a very normal behavior, very normal way to act. This is all very, very normal. Chi-hon uh, Kozuki. Chi-hon Kozuki. Fourth year student, majoring in physics. Nice to meet you. Hey, and Kurumi. Fresh-faced second-year student studying life and environmental sciences. Nice to meet you, too. You're making me feel old being in the fourth year. <laughs> you dare to laugh at me? Come here. According to Kozuki-san and Kurumi-san, they were in the same boat as we were. Everyone they had met this morning had forgotten about them. Two were the first to notice the change in their surroundings, and had tried contacting everyone they knew on campus, but to no avail. Kozuki-san said we could try doing the same, but she suspected that we would only be met with the same results. Ah, uh, I'm Fuma, third-year student in information sciences, and this is... Yuta Kiriha, also in information sciences. And... Hmm? Me? Togi-san pointed at herself, noticing everyone's eyes on her. Ahem. Well, here it goes. Togi Mayuzumi, second year repeat student in medical sciences. Call me Togi-chan. Second year repeat? That's, uh, not really something you, you brag about. 
Wh what? Why are you all looking at me like that? It's just... It's just hard to comment on. Hmm? I say I'm in medical sciences. Wouldn't it be natural to say... Oh, I'm doing the wrong voice now. By saying I'm in medical sciences, wouldn't it be natural to say... Oh, cool. You must be smart, Toby Chan. Or... I'll cook for you if you... You will tutor me, or something of that sort? The fact that you say that yourself makes it kind of hard for us to react. Ahem. Anyway, we five seem to be the only people that remember each other. We are in the same boat. We have common destiny. That's why, although we don't know how long this situation will continue, I think it would be better for us to stay in touch until we know how to fix this. How about it? Yes, I agree. We're all right. We're, we're all right with that too, right, Yuta? I'm giving. I guess I'm giving Fu more, more of a um, uh, a gravelly voice now to try and differentiate him from um, uh, a high-pitched uh, Kayan's voice. Yeah. Shall we give each other our contact number then? Oh, the phone, address book. Huh? What? But of course, if we had wanted to contact the people we knew, we should have just called everybody by phone. Oh, I see. I was so in shock, the idea hadn't crossed my mind. Looks... Looks like you didn't get that idea either. Why don't we do this? First, let's begin by sending emails to our friends on our address book and see how they respond. We'll meet up tomorrow at 4pm sharp, the Hirasuna Cafeteria. How does that sound? Everyone nodded in agreement. Kozuki-san smiled wildly. Very good. Human unlocked in the same boat. So I'm guessing, I, I, I guess we figured out why uh, the subtitle is Forget Me Not. This situation. I guess that's the new chapter. How are we going for time? Still only uh, at 5.30? Okay, still got half an hour to go. All right, let's sort out what we know. We'll put down the details and make things clear. We were sitting on sofas in the lounge on the second floor of the Hirasuna Community Center, a social welfare building in the dormitory town. First, let's make sure we're all on the same page. We all remember each other and what happened up till today, right? We looked around at each other and nodded. Very good. Did you do all your homework? How were your friends? It looks like most of the people... It looks like most of the people I know in the University of Tsukuba have forgotten about me. And I thought I'd finally made a human friend. Human friend? Here we go. There it is. That's definite. She is not a human. Okay. So maybe Beret Girl is the only human person we know? Oh, and, and maybe Fuma as well. Oh. And what about our sister? Is she a human? Most of the people, huh? Same with me. Most of the people I know have forgotten about me. It sounds like you have something on your mind. Think about it. If someone in your address book called you or sent you an email and you didn't remember who they were, what would you do, Kayan chan What would I do? I think I'd just ask, Sorry, I don't remember, but who are you? Oh, Kayan chan you're so charming. It's that innocent of yours that makes you so appealing. <laughs> oh, stop it. Hey, Anchan, you know what sarcasm is? Oh, sure, that's like saying something mean in a roundabout way, right? Knowing what something means and recognizing it are two different things. I've taught you an important lesson. Just so you know, I was being sarcastic there, too. I suppose I should teach you one more thing. Also, why does she have a belt around her middle? Just purely to emphasize her bus line? It seems so unnecessary. Oop, I accidentally rolled down. Uh, Vamp, Wolf, and uh, Siren? Siren? Why would I pronounce the R in. Siren? Siren. Siren. Uh. Uh, if someone called you and you had his phone number in your address book, normally you should just pretend you knew who they were, but try to end the conversation as quick as possible before they realize the truth. 
Ah, okay. I'm gonna run to the store quickly to get the kids uh, Saturday candy. It's a Nordic thing? Yeah, if you say so. Uh, but thanks for stopping by, Annie. Uh, hopefully you'll be back before we uh, raid off to Archie's 24-hour spectacular. But if not, uh, I'll see you around. Um... Isn't that just you, Togi chan -san? <laughs> Maybe, but come on, wouldn't you? Now, I think I have a headache. But she has a point. We should consider the fact that there may be one in five people who would behave dishonestly like that. It's not dishonest. It's called having social skills. Yeah, it's called being tactful. Pretending you, you know someone when you really don't. You, like, you know, obviously it's kind of rude to forget people. I think it's normal to... So, Kurumi-san, you're ignoring me as if I were a fly? At least if you were a fly, someone would try to catch you. Are you applying that I'm less than a fly? A worthless piece of feces not even worth your time? You cruel, heartless soul? I never went that far. Fly? I have to remember to go buy some repellent for summer. Yes, I understand how nobody wants to listen to me. This is all my fault. Who in his right mind would listen to a girl in a beret who suddenly tries to take charge of things and starts talking about theories? Fine, I'll remove myself at the speed of a meteor, meteor and quietly orbit somewhere far away and dissolve like a shooting star entering the atmosphere in the afternoon, unnoticed. <laughs> I have no idea what the hell any of that sentence is going for, but that's my best attempt at a turn. Sorry, we were in the wrong. Please, come back and continue. Good, I'll start over. Kurumi-san. Did more than one in five people claim they remembered you, or...? rumi san expression clouded instantly, giving us her answer without her having to speak. As for the rest... The same for us, too. I guess that means the... Oh, uh, Kayan. Which one's Kayan? Oh, Kay oh Kayan's the middle guy. I guess that means the entire campus has forgotten us. My friends... Oh, my friends and family back home remember me, though. Oh, really? So it's only local? Mom teased me as if I were homesick when I called her last night. At least we know we can go home if things get worse. That's a reassurance. Maybe Reno will remember if we can just get her away from this place. About... about that... Kira... Kira-kun, can I ask you something? Hmm? Sure. Did your sister remember you the second time you talked to her? I shook my head. After calling my mum, I tried talking to Rena again, but... No, it didn't work. Rena said she didn't know me. That means your sister didn't remember you from the day before. Oh! So they... Everybody seems to be forgetting every single day? That's interesting. Aha, I see. I see where you're going, Xion chan If a stranger came two days in a row declaring his... Your he was your brother, you'd remember, wouldn't you? I'd run away the second time I saw his face. So you mean... So you mean everyone wiped their memories of us from the day before, too? Yes, that's what I was worried about. That means my plan won't work. Plan? So belt under bust, arm under bust, and trooper sweater dress. <laughs> when you put it like that... <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. I thought I could just make friends with them if they'd forgotten who I am. So we're trapped in like this world of people never being able to know us. You're not wrong. You, yeah, no, you're, you're certainly not wrong, Devilbird. If they befriended me before, there's a fair chance they wouldn't mind getting to know me all over again, right? But... I guess that's not going to work. Well then, Kurumi-san. Why don't you try out my plan instead? But well, we still need to figure out how to make it work. Hmm? Let's hear it. What's your strategy, Shichan? Before I start, I need two questions asked. This is for all of you. Ooh, not one, but two questions? So greedy. 
you stop interrupting the conversation? Uma interjected. Yogi-san looked a bit hurt and shot a look at Uma as if to say, I thought you were on my side. Firstly, what do you all want to do about this situation? Put everything back to normal, of course. I don't want to be forgotten by the people I cherish. I want Haru and my other friends to remember who I am too. And I'm sure Yuta wants Rina-san to remember him. What about, what about you, Mayuzumi-san? To be honest, I don't really mind either way, but I'll go with the majority. All right. All right, so we all agree we want to change this situation. <sighs> Man, I still haven't quite nailed down the voices for uh, the girls yet. I feel like they're changing. Look at that. Rackman. Uh, I feel like the voices keep changing as I, I keep trying to find their character. We all nodded. Okay. In this situation. But, oh, that was a weird place for a, a, a chapter break. <laughs> We're still continuing this conversation. But what can we do? That's what I was about to get to. What do you all want to do in this situation? If things back home are fine. There is the option of going back and staying there and hope that this will sort itself out. You can stay with friends and family, surrounded by familiar, friendly faces that remember you. But what if the situation doesn't sort itself out? That's the problem. Someone will probably do something about it. That is unlikely, since we're the ones who are stuck with this problem. We're the only ones. Don't you all want to do something about this ourselves, instead of just hoping things will change? I believe that what I can see for myself. That's why I accept that this is happening now is reality. It's important for me to proactively get back whatever I've lost. And what's more, this is probably something that no one else has experienced before. Only we know about this situation. And it is just a coincidence that we're all students taking science courses. And is it just a coincidence? This is an opportunity for us to experiment. We're in a world that's unknown to mankind. Shouldn't we make the most of it? Whatever we do, we'll be forgotten the next day. Sure, that's a bit sad. If we can think about what we can do and how to use the situation for our benefit. I can feel my imagination running. Oh boy. Oh boy. I hadn't thought about it like that. We could be... We could... We could murder people. And even if people saw us, they'd forget the next day. Oh boy. What the fuck? What the fuck is this game? Video games were a mistake. What, what? So, you could do something like find a pretty girl and do whatever you, uh, Whatever, whenever, with her till she's all wet and soggy, and the next day she, you'd forget and you'd charm. Oh, well, I'm not even gonna reread that sentence to do a better take, because I really don't want my voice out there saying that. Oh, yep. Okay, skipping that. Oh, I didn't mean to imply that! Dogizan, that's not your imagination, but your wishful thinking, methinks. The book called it. Mm. Self a werewolves. <laughs> Togi chan, Togi chan, what do you mean by wet and soggy? Ooh, I'm glad you asked, Ann chan. It's easier for me to demonstrate. <laughs> Come here with me and I'll teach you. No! Don't! Kurumi chan is underage! Under underage? Under what? Are we in university? I'm confused. What is second year in what? Calm down. As long as we clear the R18 code, everything should be okay. What? What? I'm very confused now. It's not okay. Kurumi-san, I'll protect you from this crazy lecher. Chi-chan, ow, you're hugging me too hard. What is that? Yeah, what, the, what is going on? Really? You're going to stand in the way? That's okay. I'll just have fun with you instead. Coochie coochie coo. Yeah. Stop. Where are you touching? 
Oh, uh -huh. Chi-chan, you've been hiding some pretty impressive goods, I see. Oh boy, I really thought that this was going to be a normal, normal visual novel. I did try to pick one that wasn't going to be weird. But I guess there aren't any normal visual novels, are there? No! Stop! Stop! People are watching! It doesn't matter. Everyone will forget about this tomorrow. It matters to us. It will stay with us and scar us for life. <laughs> Not an anime. Oh, dang. What do you mean, dang? You know... You know, I think my opinion of Togi-chan-san is getting lower and lower. Wet and soggy? Leave that already! I'm glad Togi-chan-san wasn't alone in this mess. Who knows what would have happened if she had free reign. Uma, you probably aren't any better. You only feel that you're a decent human being now because the people around you are a little bit weirder. Uh, I can't defend myself. Anyway... Eh, anyway... Kozuki san fixed her beret, looking flustered. First step is to find out what's causing this. How widespread is this phenomenon, and what other effects there are. In the end, if we have to run from this, we should... Hey! Hey! Chi-chan! You've been calling this situation this all the time. Isn't there a better way of describing what's going on? Idiopathic mass amnesia. IMA, in short. Um, Togi-chan-san? I thought we need a name for this situation. Doesn't that suffice? Y yeah I was just surprised how fast you came up with that. I don't know if it's appropriate, but we could use that name for now. Oh, and we got an achievement called, it's called IMA. So, what are we going to do about IMA, temporary name? We've got two options at this moment. First option, you know what's happening is abnormal, we could run away to a safe place. Second option, we try and do something about it ourselves. Or, we could do nothing about it and keep things this way. Maybe someone is keeping quiet about actually enjoying IMA temporary name and doesn't want anything to change. I doubt that. Anyway, Toki chan san you can remove that temporary name now. It defeats the purpose of an abbreviation. If you say so. Getting back to the topic. What do you all want to do? I am going to stay and research IMA as much as I can. Kozuki san stuck her fist out. I'm with you, Xian chan Xian Han? Uma declared, placing his hand on top of her fist. Kozuki san made an expression of, as if to say, that wasn't what the fist was for, but then looked resigned and went along with it. You're with us too, right, Kan chan Hmm, I don't want to run away, but personally, I want to go home. Being on the phone isn't enough. I want to see my family and make sure they really do remember me. Hang on, I'm going to take another drink, because I feel my mouth drying up completely. Perhaps that's the right thing to do. What do you want to do, mayozumi san Whichever is fine with me, fighting against this or leaving it alone, because I'm not one to go against fate. yogi san relaxed against the sofa and stared at the ceiling. Whoops, I've forgotten the narration voice is supposed to be uh, Yuta's voice. But if you're asking whether it's better to go home or not, I say the better option is to not go home. Not that I have anything to prove my point, it's just a gut feeling. Just a gut feeling. For something so unreliable, Koki san seems so sure of her answer. Hmm, I feel like we've already decided on what we'll do, since the majority is on your side. Not necessarily. We'll simply take the option that sounds the most promising. Okay, and what do you think, Yukon? Yukun? Chian chan's called Chi chan now, so Yuta kun, you'll be Yukun. You said it so matter of factly, I accepted my new pet name more easily than I thought. Now, getting back to the more important things. 
Oh, we finally have a choice. This is the first actual choice. Two, almost two hours in, and we're finally making our first choice in this visual novel. What should we do? Uh, go home once and think about it. Stay here and try and change the situation. Or keep the current situation. Well, what do you guys think? If uh, anyone's still keeping up with this? Um... It would be interesting to go home and see what what's going on, whether like the phenomenon might move with us, run away. You think run away? <laughs> They're going to ingest you? Um, and if we go home, I guess we'll be out of, like we won't be able to see the others. Okay, let's, let's go home. Go home once and think about it. I agree with Kurumi-san. It might sound like I put a lot of thought into this, but in truth, I might just be a bit homesick. Yep, we've got homesick now, as our achievement unlocked. Or is this going to be a, oh no, I'm stuck in the dryer situation? <laughs> just because I've taken Kurumi's town side doesn't change the fact the majority is against this choice. And I don't even have a good debate to convince Ko Kozuki-san otherwise. But I feel as if how we deal with this might have a big impact on our lives. So I thought it might be a good idea to see the people that mean a lot to us before we try anything. I'm not against Kayan Chan's opinion. And it's not as if I don't have anyone I want to see. But as Mayuzumi san was saying, I think there could be a risk for people outside to know about this situation. You two could go home if you wanted to, if you want to see your family so badly. They're just people that happen to be in the same boat. They're just people that happen to be in the same boat. It doesn't mean that you have to do the same as everyone else. Hmm. Although, as I've said before, I wouldn't recommend it. Togi-san, aren't you being a bit harsh? No, it's alright. I'll think about it. After that, we tried sorting out the facts to understand the situation as much as possible. So far, there wasn't very much else to add to what we already knew. Kurumi-san never uttered a word after saying, I'll think about it, but simply stared blankly out the window. I think we've had enough discussion. Let's call it a day. Let's meet up after class tomorrow. Kozuki-san clapped her hands, and we all left the Hirasuna Community Center. Koi. That's just the chapter name, Koi. So, what now? If you're all free, why don't we go out to dinner? Umar asked as he pulled out, out his bicycle from the cluttered parking area. I don't mind. Um, sorry, but no thanks. I've got something to do by the train station. Oh, okay. See you tomorrow, Kurumi-san. Yeah, see you tomorrow! Kurumi-san waved at us cheerfully and rode off on her bicycle in the direction of Kasuga. She's faking it. Yes, she's faking it. Yogi-chan-san, I think you should apologize later. Hmm? I thought I was being helpful, but did I do the wrong thing? I guess I did. <sighs> Toki-san pressed a hand to her forehead, as if in deep thought. After a while, she slapped me on the shoulder. I'm terrible at things like that. Nope. Nope. Leaving it to you, boy. Tell her I said sorry, okay? You're, you're making me handle it? I'll pay you well later. I think Kozuki-san is better suited to handling it. Hmm, not this time. I'm the one who brought up the issue after all. It's mostly Togi-chan-san's fault, though. I'm sorry, okay? Please, Hira-kun. You can berate me as much as you want later, but please, do this for all of us. Berate you? I had no intention of... If you don't go after her now, I'll berate you for the next two hours instead. I'll get going right now. Mayuzumi-san and I will have to punish ourselves later. Ugh. I guess we aren't getting dinner after all. Kurumi-san was pretty fast on her bicycle. By the time I started going after her, she was nowhere to be seen. By the station was such a vague explanation, I didn't know where to look. There wasn't time to stop and think about it, though. The distance between us would just get further apart. Um, excuse me? I called out to a stranger nearby. He looked like someone from the university. 
I was surprised how easily I stopped a stranger. I realized it was my knowledge that they wouldn't remember me tomorrow that gave me the courage. Did you see a girl going towards Kasuga Station on a bicycle? Uh, there are a lot of those. Um, she's got two fluffy ponytails. He looked at me suspiciously, as if I were a potential stalker. Yes, yes, that does, that is a, a, a good way to look at this man. It's all right, he'll forget me tomorrow. He'll forget me tomorrow, I reminded myself repeatedly, as I described Kurumi-san as best as I could. Oh yeah, I saw her go towards the library. She was going pretty fast. She's pretty cute. Do you know her? Thanks, I'm in a hurry. Bye. What? Hey, wait. I could have told him what her name was. We would forget it tomorrow anyway. But it wasn't my name. It was Kurumi-san's name. So I felt it would be the wrong thing to do. Yeah, definitely would have been the wrong thing to do, I told myself, and headed towards the library. Why will everyone forget stuff tomorrow? Well, apparently, the fact that, like, everyone who forgets us hasn't just forgotten us once. It's now happened two days in a row. Like, they keep forgetting every time the day switches over, as, as far as we can tell. So we can kind of act without, like, impunity, because no one will remember what we did the day before. At least within the area of the university. But for some reason, people at our, in, like, our hometown and stuff can still remember us. So, yeah, it's a... Yeah, basically. Kind of. Like, the day itself isn't repeating, but everyone forgets us, so... So much for hurrying. Something punctured my tire. Pushing my now useless bike, I walked through uh, Kasuga campus, crossed the road, and passed the expo center. And finally, as I approached the public library, I found her. She was sitting on a bench by the lake, eating something. As I got nearer, I realized it was a simple piece of sliced bread. Why is this in quotes? Hey, you're back, B. Hattie. Good. We haven't got much longer now. Uh, actually, let me just uh, bring up uh, thingamajiggy. Uh, Twitch, so I can um, know when Archie goes live. Not live yet, okay. Let me just look him up. Yeah. Oh god. <laughs> was that directed at Hattie, Devil Bird? <laughs> um Uh she was, was yeah, why is this in quotation marks? She was trying to eat it from the middle, however, poking through the center of the soft spot with her fingers. <laughs> oh yeah, that is um that is a Yeah, uh, okay, very interesting way. That's a weird habit I mumbled to myself. Oh, okay, so I guess that last bit wasn't supposed to be in quotation marks. Oh, you can what's the matter? Uh um Kurumi-san looked as if she was completely fine, and it made it difficult for me to tell her. I came after you to make sure you're okay. Do you want some of this? She asked as she stuck a piece out toward me. It's what I baked this morning. If you're alright with that, why not have some? I had to eat it now. I thanked her and took a piece from her hand. This really needed an ed editor? Yeah. Like, it needed a horny editor. Like, it, well, that sounds... That sounds like it would make it worse. It needs a... Why is a werewolf eating bread? I don't know, maybe she's using it to attract ducks and then eating the ducks. The dogs can eat bread. Yeah, a non-horny editor. Someone who edits out the horny. Is what I meant. How should I put this? No wonder she was eating the middle bit. The crust was incredibly hard. It wasn't bad. The only praise I could think of was the fact that she baked it herself. <laughs> if they had anyone with experience in normal human behavior, this game wouldn't have been made. Um, uh, it's, uh, not bad? <laughs> it's okay. I've eaten it. I know it isn't good. Really? I try to use it as little sugar, salt, and butter as possible. So, it's not fluffy. It's kind of dry, too. I call it sad bread. 
I wish I could bake pretty pastries, but I guess I'm not cut out to be a baker. I almost asked if she was on a special diet, but that seemed rude. He should get used to it. If a woman offers you uh, food she made, eat it and like it. <laughs> You've definitely got a firm stance there, Devil Bird. Uh, she didn't look as if she had much meat on her, excluding her boot. Why did you have to mention that? You didn't have to mention that, but you did. But maybe she had insecurities other people didn't know about. Wait, then why would she start eating handmade bread at such a place at such a time? I thought about this and that. I thought about this and that as I chewed on the dry piece of bread. I tried swallowing it and choked. <laughs> <coughs> Do you want some tea? She handed me a water bottle, and I finished the contents of it quickly. Well, I have a drink right here that I can use to... Ah. Ew. Thanks. I thought I'd die there. Hey, you can You drank everything. That was all I had. Sorry. I'm just kidding. <laughs> this kid needs to chuck the chicken and get over it. You seem pretty alright. Of course I'm alright. But just now, never mind. It's just that Togi-san told me to tell you she's sorry. She didn't mean to be cruel. I told her because I didn't have anything else to say. <laughs> she didn't have to apologize. Ooh, we finally getting a, uh, a non-standing image. Um, the more I look at it, uh, uh, the less I'm grateful for it. Uh, there's some strange things going on here with the perspective. Her neck seems to be facing the opposite way to her spine. <laughs> and her boobs are hidden. And also her um, uh, ponytails have massively decreased in size. Oh, I think we can see a little bit of a hint of a boob underneath the arm there. Like underneath that sleeve. There's definitely some kind of sagging going on in front of that dress. She stretched her legs out and gazed at the surface of the lake. Koi. She muttered to herself. Koi? There's several meanings to that word I could think of. First possibility? On purpose. She was implying she had thought Togi-san had hurt her on purpose? Yeah, because koi is also like a fish, and I believe it's also like the word for love in Japanese. Second possibility, thick or condensed. Also sometimes used to describe someone's character as being strongly unique. The five of us in this IMA situation were pretty weird. But that would be strange that she would suddenly decide to point that out right now. Nothing on this one? Third possibility, come. Maybe she wanted to say... <laughs> Togi, Togi-san should come herself if she wanted to apologize. <laughs> uh, you've ruined me. You've ruined me, chat. And now all I see is perversion everywhere. Fourth possibility? Love? Did she fall in love with me because I came after her? Nah, that can't be it. Or can it? Leaving me aside, Kurumi-san started tearing the leftover bread in her hands into little pieces. And then she lifted her leg like a baseball player and... Take that! She flung a handful of breadcrumbs toward the lake. The breadcrumbs landed on the water, and several koi fish swam up, fighting over the pieces. The center of the bread is mine, and the crust is for the koi fish. Oh, so that's why she ate the bread from the middle. And that's what koi meant. I felt embarrassed by my assumptions. I felt a bit embarrassed my assumptions were all wrong. Wait a second, I'll give you guys some too. Be patient. I watched her as she spoke to the sparrows and other little birds and found myself smiling. Noticing my eyes on her, she turned around and looked sheepish, like a child caught playing a prank. What's the matter? Why don't you continue? Because I know I'm not supposed to. We aren't allowed to feed wild animals here. The food we eat is too saturated for the birds or fish. Oh, I see. No wonder Kurumi-san's sad bread didn't contain sugar, salt, or butter. But 
For now, just for today. Can I? Because I'm a little lonely? I need a friend. You can, you can, you won't rat on me, will you? Can you turn a blind eye? Oh, the boobs are back. Rat on you? I wasn't even going to scold you for it. No, no, wait. I have a better idea. You could do it with me. We'll be partners in crime. And with that, she pressed the plastic bag containing sad bread into my hands. Come on, let's spread it around. It will take a while if I do it alone. It would be wasteful to throw it away. Huh? Isn't that what we're going to do? Throw it? She stopped her arm midair, just as she was about to throw her breadcrumbs into the lake. Just checking. Isn't Archie supposed to have started by now? Or have I gotten my time zones mixed up? Hattie, if you could be a darling, uh, go check on Archie's uh, schedule for um, his 24-hour thing. Am I? Maybe I'm on the wrong day, even. I feel like I did the math correctly, didn't I? Um, uh, where are we? Um, I meant not throw throw, but I mean it would be wasteful to bin it. That's right, that's what I wanted to say. Come on, help out. Uh, okay. There, take that! Rumi sounds bread frowns. Bread breath? Bread my bar. Kasumi-san's breadcrumbs defied the laws of physics and flew far into the lake. I tried to copy her, but my crumbs dropped near nearby pathetically, flew conveniently into the mouth of the fighting koi fish. See our difference in experience. Stop looking so smug. Or rather, isn't it pointless to throw it where there aren't any fish? What? Oh, oops. You purposefully made me do that by playing on my competitive nature, didn't you, Yukon? I feel kind of shy uh, when you call me that. You're checking? Thanks, Hattie. But I've always called you Yukun. Yeah, I know, but the effect was double fold when we were alone. Of course, I couldn't say that to her. Kurumi-san, you called Togi-san Togi-chan, don't you? Using her full name. I began my feeble excuse. Because if I used the same method, I'd have to call her Tochan. That sounds like I'm calling her Tuchan, as in Dad. That caught me unaware, and I burst out laughing. Hey and Chan may be big-hearted, but she can't call that woman father. No way. Kurumi-san said angrily, startling the birds around her. They stopped eating the breadcrumbs and flew away. Kurumi-san, you are angry with Togi-san, aren't you? No, I'm not. I'm not angry. I was just sad. It was like it didn't matter whether I was there or not. Friendships de develop differently for each person. I'm sure it will get harder for Togi-san to part with you as time passes. Especially now that we're stuck in IMA. But the first step would be to show up again with a sunny smile, don't you think? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. I said, see you later to Togi-chan too. He should have started by now. Okay, good, 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 good. He's just running late then. Hmm. Yeah, that's what I, <laughs> that's what I was thinking. I'm like, I hope he hasn't fallen asleep. Uh. I said, see you later to Togi-chan too. I'm a woman of my word. He. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. Oh, just got an achievement for a sad bread. Besides, it looks like Toby Togi-san came after you after all. Earth is Nights is the name of this chapter. Oh, why did you have to give it away? You'll be terrible at organizing surprise parties. Okay, I feel like I've I found, um... i found, uh, Pointy's voice now. It's okay, I don't intend to. Oh, so cold. <laughs> Rumi-san couldn't help but laugh at Togi-san's power. 
that was a good stopping point. Okay, we'll, we'll stop here. I think I hit uh, this button. And then, yep, there's a save there. Save that. Okay. We'll uh, switch over to just chatting. Here we are. Thank you, everyone, for uh, coming around. Uh, sticking around. Everyone who came in on the raid, thank you. Thank you again to, to Time Goblin for uh, the raid. Thanks to Devil Bird and Big Hattie for sticking around long enough. Oh, and now I'm fucking zooming all over the place. Let me close that game down so that I'm not clicking on anything. Uh, back. Oh, that's not the right thing. Let's just close that. Uh, you have 11 more cards. Well, I'm not sure why, uh, where Archie's at. But, uh, if he's not going to be online, he's already 10 minutes, uh, late. Um, I guess we will raid somewhere else. And... Let's think. Let's think things through. Oh, you have 11 more cards for ceiling. I was so confused what you were, you were saying there for a second there, Devil Bird. Uh, you mean um your Christmas cards. Um, so yeah, thanks everyone who uh, came in on the raid. Uh, do I, I want any suggestions? No, I think I'm going to go raid over to Edwin. He's been playing through Mass Effect uh, Legendary Edition lately. I think it's his first time playing through. Um, so let's go slash raid. And yes, uh, thank you for everyone who's been uh, lurking as well. You are all my little humble bees. It has been a wonderful time. Uh, next Saturday, I believe I will do another, um, I, we will be continuing this game, but I probably will push it back uh, later on into the day to my normal time, which is like 10 p.m. So if you look at uh, my schedule down in the doobly-doo, um, that'll be like the same time of day as my Wednesday, uh, my Monday, Wednesday, Friday streams. Um, and yeah, speaking of that, we've still got Earthworms going on on Mondays. And then next Wednesday, we're beginning a new game. I haven't decided on that yet completely because we finished Puzzle Agent this week. Uh, and we've also got, uh, I believe, the last chapter of... Um, uh, what's it called? Dead Space to finish off uh, next Friday. I can't imagine it'll take us the full stream to finish that. So we've got that to look forward to, and I, I should probably have another game lined up in case we do finish uh, Dead Space early that stream. Um, so yeah, thank you to uh, Devil Bird, Big Hattie. Thanks, Neat, for the lurk. Um... And uh, yeah, I will see you all on Monday or next Saturday, depending on uh, how often you want to show up. Or I will see you all on your own streams. Let's go. Bye.